So the first week of this build, we had high tides all during the day, which meant every single footing hole that we put in the ground filled up with water and we couldn't pour concrete into, except from the hours of like midnight till 3 a.m. And then this week, we've got bucket loads of rain and here's a win. Good times. And a very tight schedule. Ah! Good building conditions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Stop our online now lessons. Now it's raining on the internet. We were almost at the close. No, that's right. He's finished with it. I shouldn't throw things in the We ended up having so much rain during this week that we barely took the camera out of the house. The concrete footings and posts were completed and they needed time to cure. So in the meantime, a number of the staff moved on to preparing timbers for the bearers and joists and then constructing frames, ready for things to move full speed as soon as possible. Hello, my love. Going all right? Yep, very good. Just working through it. Our yeah, boys did really well last night. They concreted all the bottom of the footings, all the footings in for the remaining posts. Now we're stripping these casings off. We're going to reuse them to concrete the rest of them. Pull the footings in the house number two tonight, and then hopefully get all of them because we can do half the block during the daytime, and the other half we'll have to do at night. And then we should be able to maybe even have enough posts to cast them all tomorrow, which would be Friday. Maybe so. Yeah, track them well. <laughs> Whoa, honey! Did you just paddle all the way to the beach? Whoa, that's cool! Is this your new ride, is it? Pretty pimpin'. Yeah, he's gotta commit. Fill it up. <laughs> cool way to anchor your canoe, mate. <laughs> A day today. What a day to be at the beach. But I've got to go to work. What are you laughing at, Mary? What are you laughing at, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the kids and Mary and Katie are at the beach this morning, and I'm back up to Jilo because there has been so much stuff going on. It is just mental. We have caught all the posts for the new cabins, we've knocked all the new cabins down. Um, we're going to be putting out bearers on tomorrow. We've got our joists ready to go down. We've got the frames built for the first of the two new houses. And we are cracking on at Chyla. We've got the floor, half the floors down. First coat of paint's going on the walls and picking up any plastering imperfections and fixing those. So much going on. So no time for me at the beach today. Boo. Uh, I might get really hot and sweaty and then come back and jump in. But for now, off to work. Okay, i got to go to work, kids. Bye. This is looking like a bit of progress. So these are the timber frames for first house, yeah? For the single. We've got all the other frames cut and ready to go here. I'm gonna shift these over to the other site this afternoon and then we're gonna build all the frames for this house here. So this is one of our larger, so it's like a two bedroom villa, much, much larger than the other ones. Really great for families. Acquiring the timber needed for this kind of construction takes months. And even though we've had a steady flow of timber from two main local suppliers, we're still working with relatively green timber as everyone tries to keep up. It's actually really important to us to share this side of our off-grid build with you because the forests here are such a precious resource and the impact that we have as a resort is not something that we take lightly. Jace also has a history working in sustainable timber, which we will share a little more about later in this episode. I took a morning away from the island to visit a local sawmill so that we could show you where our timber is coming from and just how it is sustainably harvested. Yeah. 
This area of mainland New Georgia is absolutely beautiful. The rich flora surrounding the river passage into the jungle was honestly breathtaking. I immediately felt how crucial it is for us to tell you this story. Finish now. Oh ho! Come on, Otu. As we arrived, Otu was leaving with a boatload of timber, ready to return to Upi. And here, on the side of the river, we would meet Nicholson. Oh, good morning, Nicole. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> good. You how? I'm okay. Nice. <laughs> Just a short walk through the jungle, and we had arrived at the milling site. I could immediately see how a single tree had been harvested here and this area where Nicholson and his small team had been working for the past few weeks had very little damage around it. The last section of this tree was going to be cut today and I was thrilled to capture just how they do this. With so few hands, the entire mill is set up around the log. It wasn't the easiest location given the log's position in pretty muddy water, but this challenge was easily offset by how conveniently placed the site was to the river, which made it a whole lot easier to extract the product by boat later. You'll have to move him. Bye, uh, Mufala. Never lame, but this is a hard place, muddy place. Yeah. A great deal of time was spent setting up the equipment correctly and levelling it to the log. I found this incredibly interesting because the simple engineering of this mill enables precision cutting in the middle of a jungle. And that to me is just brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Nice place. Yeah, so me and the the remaining one, him lay down there and cut him. Okay. So this piece low here, last piece for yeah, last his father tree. This fella was a me one by cut him for six by two and six by three quarter and six by one and a half. Oh, mainly uh, door frames and we do seal or something like that. Yep. Kasim or the blood J. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oopala. 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 Everything back on me and barba square and good quality. Mm -hmm. This place, there's no logging. Yeah. So we have um, pretty good trees. They are big and they are well, good trees around this place. It's a virgin area. Mm -hmm. So we're still lucky about from here up to Tamaneke. We haven't got any logins. Yeah. I always select trees. Well, for me looking tree him no big enough. It's just a waste of time for me to arrange logs and cutting around about 10, 20 pieces of timber. So mm -hmm. we select 
bigger logs. Yeah. So that we get good timbers. We do select wasses. Smaller mm -hmm. wasses, we don't cut them. Yeah. So, so why wasa? Uh, wasa and osemi. In the Solomons, we use wasa mainly outside. Yes. There are so many trees I've been cutting for so many years now. Boni, they are not very good in the weather outside. And wasa is the most uh, wonderful timber outside. We mm. can do decking and things like that outside. Yeah, strong. Yeah, that's right. And termite proof, yeah? Yep. Ham na main something we ham good lo ham. Jailane me good, yeah? No, this is a place like this one. Or the barrow are pulled and right straight according to this part here. Yeah. But this one, ham barrow elevate the side of the hills. Hem so good. there's no in stuck at damages. Only damages when we will like do him is clearing places. Um, but small place, yeah? Yeah. Got him some meal. You will like take him a little bit chilly. And yeah. For so. sending picking in law school. Yeah, that's right. While we see just a few people here today directly employed by this local sawmill, the wider economic advantage to the community is massive. Individuals with gainful employment support their immediate and their extended families. So three people here today would more likely contribute directly to at least 30 or 40 other islanders, if not more. In a country that struggles to provide basic healthcare and education, it might be surprising to know that it comes at a cost to families. And if they can't afford fuel to get to a hospital or school fees for their children, then they simply do not access the care or education that they are entitled to. Nicholson has been upskilling his son and also employs casual staff thanks to this sawmill, which is a real advantage for his entire community. Okay, thank you Nicole for your beautiful timber. You're always welcome. Harvesting more logs here, a sustainable type. We will know cut them stuck a log in one place mm -hmm. and for helping other families and even all the people who are we'll building house block either too. It's not like how log loggers. Mm -hmm. cut him tree, we have to cut him everywhere no more, and then all the time no last long. But this type of milling, him are good to us. Make him use it, select him over trees, and you shall uh, harvest him tree blow you very long time. Yeah, for many years, but you follow got him resource low here. Yeah? yeah. The bottom line when you compare commercial logging to selective harvesting using a Lucas sawmill is in every way an absolute no-brainer. Commercial logging is intensely destructive, not only to the forest, but also the surrounding marine environment where runoff, pollution and machinery destroy additional areas of habitat. It can take up to 80 years for a commercially harvested forest to return to its natural state, and with as much as 80% of the world's forests already destroyed or irreparably degraded, the remaining unharvested areas are of critical importance. 
Small-scale selective harvesting is one way for local resource owners to manage and benefit rightfully from this precious resource. In pure economic terms, there is 20 times the value to the resource owner harvesting in this manner. This is equivalent to harvesting a single tree using a sawmill versus an entire hectare in commercial practice. In a well-managed forest, that resource can then provide a constant, sustainable income alongside the provision of materials needed needed for communities to build shelter. And home we go, Willie. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Back to Ubi. <laughs> Back to Ubi. We arrived home a few hours after Otu, just as he finished unloading today's stockpile of timber. Now more than ever, I can appreciate the hard work that goes into acquiring this beautiful resource that becomes our island homes and furniture, which we will enjoy for decades to come. So tell everyone, what's your history with sustainable timber? Uh, so I ran a project in the Morova here for over 10 years, working with smallholder communities who had small plots of land and uh, getting them to a stage where they were able to sustainably manage their forests themselves and assisting them in the export of that timber under a certification program. So trying to get communities away from commercial logging and into managing their own forests and getting the maximum return they could off that product. For communities in the Solomons, it's probably the best way for them to utilise their forestry resource is by harvesting it down to sawn board form, getting an accreditation attached to it so that it can be sold into some different markets. Um, but even if it's just into the local market, by converting it from round log to sawn board, you're, you're easily 20xing the value and, and really changing the number of logs that you have to harvest to make it economically viable. Yeah, there's also some really cool projects uh, coming online at the moment with the first forest areas in the Solomons coming under a carbon trading, carbon offset uh, program and those credits are being sold into the international markets. So that's really, really encouraging to see that happening. It's obviously the next logical step in protecting the forests of the Solomons. So hopefully we see more of that and areas that have been logged also are able to be reforested and brought into those programs as well. That'd be great. So we of course think about these things in the construction of our buildings and we're really proud to be working with local producers who can manage their own resource and, and get the best value they can off this amazing resource that they've got here and having a positive contribution to its protection because the reality is in an area like this the only way you really protect a resource is to make sure that it is economically secure so that the communities and the owners are actually making a sustainable income off it so they don't have to succumb to the pressures of these outside commercial companies who want to exploit and take the resource from them. We can definitely provide some links in the in the description below about some areas that you can look into for making conscious decisions about timber products. There's a number of certification agencies out there that verify uh, certain aspects of how the timber is harvested and depending on where you live in the world, um, one of those may be dominant. So look into where your timber comes from, get a bit more knowledgeable about where these products are coming from, who's producing them, what uh, rules are being used in their production and just make a conscious decision just like you would your organic vegetables in the shopping center down the road. As always, we love having discussions with you, particularly about topics like this in the comments below. So uh, if you have a different opinion, let us know. Uh, if you agree or want any more information, just throw us a comment below and uh, we'll get back to you again. The four of us have definitely outgrown the 50 square meters that we're currently living in. This is Koi House. With the workshop and main path right behind us, we've decided that it's time to move our family into the jungle for a bit more privacy and of course some open ocean views. But don't worry, we're not really giving up this incredible location either. You'll have to stay tuned as we reveal our plans with Koi, but for now, let's go up and check out the progress at Chyla. So we've got three different job sites and a full-blown timber production operation going on at the moment. Plus we have guests in-house. So I'm sort of scattered between all the different job sites at the moment, just running between. But things are settling down a little bit now. I mean, a little bit more time on the tools, which is good. And we've got one more week with guests and then we close down again. Once we close, we have two weeks of absolute anarchy getting these rooms all put together, all the noisy work done before we have clients back in. Very, very tight time frame on this build, but I want to show you guys what's been going on at Chyla. Can't actually remember what we were up to last time I was filming here. But I know some stuff is definitely new. Oh, that breeze is just epic today. Oh, I wish you could really see that view. It's insane. Has some nice northerlies to keep it really cool up here. This room definitely was not painted <laughs> when we were last here. We've got some sheeting up now blocking those windows so we're not getting water in. The ceiling was, but all these walls have got their first coat on them. And we're just using that as an opportunity so that's a really easy way of picking up any imperfections in the plastering. 
and we just go back and touch them up and then continue painting and the floors are going down and the rest of the house the same. So the floors are down in some of the rooms. This is one of the kids' rooms. I feel really shiny this view. That's like the room, the view from the back room. It's insane. Just amazing rainforest right on the backdrop there. Come on, Tatu Fola. I mean, Octay. This is the floor in our bedroom. But Bobby's sending some plaster, so I'm gonna get out of here. Absolutely amazing the difference that a coat of paint makes. Just makes the whole space feel a lot more complete. It's funny, even the floors going in, I reckon makes a big difference as far as just feeling like a room versus a job site. Just bringing that floor level up and knowing where your ceiling heights are gonna be, just makes it feel a bit more real. Anyway, that's good. The windows here are ready to go in. Yeah, we are moving along well. Um, but yeah, lots going on this other the rest of the house is not done yet, so we're gonna sort of do that afterwards because we can keep working on that whilst this is finished. I just wanna get this sealed now and yeah, just remove that risk of getting rain damage and everything in there. So yeah, that's what's going on here. The other rooms are going really well, but we're just gonna try and keep all different job sites going at the same time at the moment because they all have to keep going at the same time. All right, tell us what's happening. I'm sure I look really attractive in this position. Yeah, it's good. Hold on. <laughs> um, that's really close. Get no, away from my face. Good, I can't good. handle it. Um, what's happening? Well, through no fault of our own, there's been delays in the shipping out of Australia. Significant delays. So now this boat is arriving the day that we essentially close the resort to do the major building work. Arriving in Honiara. In Honiara. So we still have to clear it through customs and then get it on a ship and out here. Yeah, it, now I'm seeing if when it arrives, we can actually get into the container, remove some of the items, put them on the ferry next weekend and get them here before, like midway through the close down period, which would be perfect. So you can keep going. And I can keep going. Then all the other stuff can come a week or so later. There's no problems with that. But we also there. haven't secured a plan for that either because it's a 40 foot container. No, no, I, ha I think I've got that sorted. It's just that it won't, it doesn't fit the time frame of getting here at the beginning of when I need it. So if we don't have to get all the stuff here, which I don't, I only need like maybe 3% so of it now. We're relying on people in Honiara at ports. No, so we're relying on... Well, yeah, it's got to clear ports, but then we actually have to physically get the stuff out of the container and then ship that partial, like, small amount of cargo on a ferry, which Those we've Those exact before. things. So what kind of miracle are we hoping for that might actually get that stuff here? Well, it depends. If it's, it happens to be packed in the front of the container when they open the doors, it'll be pretty easy. If it's not, then, yeah, you can't unload a full 40-footer just to get some rolls Bags of air of somewhere. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit of plaster. Anyway... It's okay. It's just so frustrating because we're ahead of time. Like, we're never, ever ahead of schedule. And we're ahead of schedule right now, and this is really going to... Throw things off. Yeah, put things, throw things off. That's really cute, Arlo. Thank you. It's some more working stuff for Daddy. Not so you can keep building? <laughs> Did you hear me saying that? I was... <laughs> That's so cute. Thanks, Arlo. Are there any rolls of air cell and any uh, 50 mil deck screws in there? Yeah. <laughs> any bags of plaster? 